All right, so we've learned about using the sine rule and the cosine rule for finding missing sides and angles on non-right-angled triangles. But what most people struggle with is when to use each one. Which one are you supposed to pick? So we've got this one here that's the sine rule if you don't know one of the sides. If you're looking for a side, you use that one. The sine rule can also go the other way around. If you want an angle, you'd use it this way around. We've got the cosine rule where that purple one at the top is... Um, if you're looking for a missing side, and that peachy one is if you're looking for a missing angle, but how do you know which one of these you're supposed to use? So I've got a little something to help you um, remember. If you're looking for sides, if it's missing sides that you're, you're uh, looking for, then it's these two. Look, it's where that, that A, remember, represents a missing side. So if that's the first thing that you write down, then it's uh, one of those two if you're looking for a missing side. But if the first thing you write down is an angle, like on these two, those are the rules that you're going to use to find out angles. And then the other key, so say you know that you're looking for a side, you've got two of those formulae to choose from, you now need to think, do I have matching pairs or not? So for the sine rule, everything comes in matching pairs. So the angle with its opposite side will always be listed and you'll have two of those. So you'll have two matching pairs. Now if you don't have matching pairs, if you've got sides without the angle opposite to it, then you'll be using the cosine rule. So let's see this in action. Here's an example. Let's first of all label up our uh, missing part first with the thing that we want to work out. Now we always give the missing part an A. This time it's an angle so we give it a capital A. The lowercase a goes on the side that's opposite it, the other angle gets a capital B, and the side opposite it gets a lowercase b. So which of these four rules that we know are we going to use? So first of all, we've got, we're going to look for whether we've got matching pairs or not. So a does have its matching pair on this other side there, and the angle b has its matching pair on the opposite side. So we do have matching pairs, which means we can use the sine rule. Next we see, are we looking for an angle or a side? We want to work out an angle, so we're going to use this form of the sine rule. And then of course you work it through, you've seen how to do this, so I'll move through quite quickly. You're going to rewrite that with the values in place of the things that you do know. Use your graphics calculator on the equation menu, um, put it in to solve it, and you'll get the answer that A is 50.6 degrees. Okay, so let's see a few of these and matching them up with what formulae they could possibly be. So let's have a look at question one. Again, first thing, have a look. Have I got matching pairs? So I've got A with a matching side opposite it there, but that 4.3 doesn't match with any angle. We don't have a matching pair there. Same with the 3.1. So we haven't got matching pairs. That means we're going to need a one of the cosine rules. We're looking for an angle, so which of those four would it be? We want the cosine rule that works out an angle. That's of course this one here, cos A. So that's the one that goes with question number one. I'm not going to work it through, we're just working on matching up these things first. Alright, number two. Look for your matching pairs. This time we have got matching pairs. Each of those angles does have the side opposite it. We're working out an angle. Now since we have matching pairs we will be using one of the sine rules and because we're working on an angle that's this one here with the sine A at the top. So we'll pop that onto that question there. Okay question number three. We've got um, a pair there but we don't have any other pairs. So we want to work out a missing side we're using the cosine rule because we don't have matching pairs and we're using the cosine rule that has that um, the side part of it coming first, so the a squared first. And finally question four, we have got matching pairs there, so we're going to use the sine rule. We're looking for a missing side, so we're going to use the sine rule that has the sides on the top that's that blue one there. 
and that's all there is to it. So have a look, have I got matching pairs? If I have, I use the sine rule. If I don't, I use the cosine rule. And then you look for whether you're working out a side or an angle to find out which of those two of sine of the sine rule or which of the two of the cosine rule you're going to use.